Country Lather Soap Works with the hot process Southern Belle, Jesse Whittington. Now, get ready to wash the stink off. What's going on everybody? Today we are not making hot process soap, we're making cold process soap using the heat transfer method which is what I'm showing right here. Basically I separate my hard oils and my liquid oils into two separate vessels and I add my fresh mixed lye solution to my hard oils in order to melt them. So right here I'm just getting them melted down, stick blending that last little bit at the end with my cordless stick blender. And from there I add my liquid oils which has my chilled goat's milk mixed in it and we stick blend it together y'all. Once we get everything stick blended and emulsified together we're going to take this batter and we're going to split it down into three separate vessels. You can see there's the first one which is just a basic five gallon bucket got a water bucket right yonder we're putting a second batch in and just so we can make things easy to pour we're going to pour the remainder of our batter out of our 50 quart stock pot into another five gallon bucket from there i add my colorant that is mixed with my fragrance oils and i blend them in my soap batter so we had navy blue now we got white and our last fragrance oil which it's all the same fragrance oil but my last batch is mixed with bentonite clay and from there we're going to pour our bentonite clay solution into the bottom of our fantastic molds by my girl July with Winston and Walter.ca I'll tag her in the video so if you want to check out her fantastic soap molds that she makes herself you can definitely go give her a visit now we're just going to alternate our blue batter and our white batter into our mold and then from there, we're going to swirl everything together with our, uh, our Gagnon swirling tool. There it is. We don't use a coat hanger to swirl our soaps anymore. We use a designated tool which is made by Gagnon Creations. And from there, after the soap has set for a few days, it's time to get everything unmolded. We, uh, we poured our soap into a 31 pound mold by WinstonWalter.ca, a 7 pound tall and skinny mold by WinstonWalter.ca, and uh, this homemade mold that I made that makes soap in the shape of my home state, Mississippi. So we're going to get everything unmolded and prep to cut. Now I want you to notice right here. This is not your typical everyday run-of-the-mill mold you get from Amazon or what so or whatever. These silicone molds are thick, y'all. These are not the kind that you can turn inside out or whatever. These are super thick, heavy-duty silicone liners. And the boxes that hold the liners, they, they, they don't give, y'all. These are heavy-duty boxes. They are built to last. So needless to say, I would highly recommend these molds if you're getting into soap making. They are built to last and they have stood the test of time with me. And if you know me, you know I'm hard on equipment. So if I endorse it, it's really good stuff. Okay, I get this question a lot on TikTok. Jesse, what does steaming do with soaps? Well, my soaps, I don't know if it's my recipe or what it is about it, my cold processed soaps end up with a lot of soda ash. It has, I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that I use goat milk in my soap and I don't cover them. So that's, that's why they soda ash so much. But here's the cut and 
here's the grand finale, y'all. Y'all don't forget to stay strong, I really need keep strings, calm, I can't lather really on, and God bless. And most importantly, wash your stink off every day, y'all. Oh. Y'all check that out. That's pretty. I love it. That's like a Margaret swirl right there. Am I wrong? 